For lesson one of our linear equations unit, we are gonna look at slope-intercept form. So for this form, it has those two parts, the slope and the intercept. So let's talk about intercepts. Intercepts are a line that, where a line intersects with one of the axes. So our y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. So if we are looking at a line, for example, okay, the y-intercept would be where it crosses the y-axis here. The x value of the y-intercept is always zero because it doesn't move anywhere right or left, it's on the axis. Versus the x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. So for this line, it would be right here where it crosses the x-axis there. In this case, the y value of the x-intercept is always zero because it doesn't go anywhere up or down. It stays on the axis. When we look at our non-proportional linear relationships, they can be written in the form y equals mx plus b. This is the slope-intercept form because we have our slope, which is represented by m, and our intercept, which is represented by b. That is the y-intercept. So it is quite literally what the name says it is. So if I'm looking at these equations here, <clears throat> My slope is what m is, or is what x is being multiplied by. So here, x is being multiplied by negative five. Negative five is my slope. And then the constant we are adding, positive three, is the intercept. Here, y equals one fourth x minus six. Well, the value that x is being multiplied by is one fourth, so our slope is one fourth. And the intercept is that constant that's being added or subtracted. Here we're subtracting 6, so we use that subtraction as a negative. Negative 6 is the intercept. Number 3, y equals negative x plus 5. Well, our slope isn't negative x. Technically, ne technically negative x means negative 1 times x, or negative 1x. So our slope is negative 1, and the constant that's being added is 5. Writing an equation in slope-intercept form, given the slope and the intercept. So our equation should always be y equals the slope, which in this case is negative 3 times our x value, and our intercept, which is just negative 4, so minus 4. You technically speaking could write this as y equals negative 3, and maybe you put x in parentheses, and maybe you do plus negative 4. That technically is the same thing, but writing it like this, y equals negative 3x minus 4, is the most simplified and most algebraic way to write it, and you should get in the habit of doing it that way. Number five. Again, it should be in the form y equals. Our slope is negative 3 fourths, so negative 3 fourths x, the x just right next to the fraction. Our intercept is negative 2, so I'm just doing minus 2. Number six, our slope is five sixths, so y equals five sixths, right next to x. Our intercept is positive eight, so plus eight. For seven, our slope is zero. So if I plugged this in, this would be y equals zero x, and our intercept is negative eight, so minus eight. That doesn't really look simplified, right? We wouldn't write something as 0x. 0 times anything is just 0. So this is technically y equals 0 minus 8, which is just y equals negative 8. So if you have a slope of 0, if you think about it, if you're on a hill and it has a slope of 0, it's a straight horizontal line, and that's what this special case is. And number 8, a slope of 2.5, so y equals 2.5x, and an intercept of 0. You could write plus 0, technically, but do we need that? No. 
So the most simplified way to write it would just be y equals 2.5x. Now getting into writing an equation given the graph in slope-intercept form. That's going to be the easiest way to write this. So we remember that what we put next to the x is our slope. That's when we should be looking at our rise over our run. So I'm looking at two clear points, which we have two stated here, and I'm finding the rise over the run. Looking at this, it's going down as we go to the right. So we should know that this is going to be a negative slope. For my rise, which I do first, I'm going down two, so negative two, and I'm going over one, two, three, four, five, positive five to the right. So our slope is negative two over five, and that is multiplied by x. Our second part is our intercept. So where it intercepts the y-axis is at positive four, so plus four. Okay, number 10. Again, it's gonna be y equals, we need to find our slope. So we are doing the rise over the run. For the rise, we're going up three, so plus three, and we're going two to the right, so positive two. They are both positive, three over two. It's going to be a positive slope, which makes sense. As we go to the right, our number gets bigger, so three over two x. Where does it intercept the y-axis? It intercepts at negative three, so minus three for our y-intercept. All right, now graphing. So instead of writing the equation from the graph, we are gonna graph given an equation. So y equals negative two thirds, this should be an x right here, plus one. Graph the y-intercept using what point? Well, first we're doing the intercept. If it's at positive one, we should know that it's just right here, one on the y-axis. And we know the x value is zero, the y value is one. That's where it intercepts. From here, we're gonna apply the slope. So we have a slope of negative two thirds. So when I have a negative, I'm not applying it to the negative for to the two and the three because a negative divided by a negative would be a positive. So ultimately, I'm either deciding to put the negative with the number on top. This is wrong. The number on the top, so I put it with the two here, and the three is positive, or I put it with the number on the bottom. The two is positive and the three is negative. Either one works. So if I do negative two, which is my rise, that means I'm going down two, and then positive three, my run is positive three. So three to the right, one, two, three. And I mark that point. Technically, I only need two points to make a line. I like to do it where it's gonna fill out the sheet so I can double check and make sure I'm not making mistakes. So I'm gonna do it again. Down two, over three. Down two, over three. And then that's gonna fill it on this side. We can also do the reverse, which would be then applying here where we have positive two, negative three. So positive two would be up two, negative three would be to the left two, three. One, two, three. Same thing, up to negative three. This is why it doesn't matter which of those two options we did. And then you should use a ruler to connect those points. And if they don't all connect in a straight line, that means you did something wrong because these are all linear equations and they should all form a straight line. So let's practice that. Number 12, y equals 3x minus 9. So we start with our intercept, negative 9. That means it intercepts the y-axis at negative 9. Then we have our slope. Our slope is 3, which means 3 over 1. So we have positive values, positive 3 over positive 1. So I'm going to go up and to the right from my point. So I'm going to go up, 1, 2, 3 to the right one. Up, one, two, three, to the right one. And I'm gonna keep going. 
One, two, three, to the right, one. One, two, three, over one. One, two, three, over one. One, two, three, over one. And as I'm graphing this, it should form a straight line. And it's positive, right? This was a negative slope, it's going down as we go to the right. This was a positive slope, it's going up as we go to the right. Okay, number 13, plus two is our intercept, so we need to plot right at two. And our slope is negative one over two, negative one half. So I'm gonna apply the negative to the one over two as I'm graphing, so that means I'm going down one to the right two. Down one to the right two. Down one, over two. Down one, over two. Then I can do the reverse, right? Which would be positive one, negative two as I'm going backwards. So up one to the left two. 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 And then I'm going to connect these points to make a straight line. If it doesn't make a straight line, that means I did something wrong. And then I want you to look at something. This had a slope of three and it was a lot steeper than this slope of one half, right? So a higher number should be a steeper slope. That's another thing you can be checking as you're graphing. All right, last thing here. We want to graph this. This is not in slope intercept form. So I need to rewrite this so that it is in slope intercept form, okay? In order to do that, I need to move my x away from the y. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. So on the left side, I'm left with 4y. On the right side, I'm going to write it in order with the x first. So negative 3x minus 8. This still isn't slope-intercept form, though, because our y is being multiplied by 4. So the opposite is to divide everything by 4. On this side, the fours will cancel. We get y equals negative three over four. I'm gonna write that just as a fraction. That's already simplified. Negative three fourths x. And then we have minus eight over four. Well, eight divided by four is two, so it's gonna be minus two. And let's go ahead and plot that. We've got our intercept is right here at negative two. And then our slope. Negative three-fourths, I'm gonna do it as negative three over four. So that means I'm going down three. One, two, three to the right four. One, two, three, four. Keep going, down three. One, two, three to the right four. One, two, three, four. And let's do the reverse. Positive three over negative four. So positive three would be up three to the left four. One, two, three, four. Up three, one, two, three to the left four, one, two, three, four. And then I should connect these. They should form a straight line. If it doesn't, I did something wrong.